Pictures of Kurdish fighters killed in battle with ISIL attacked for your militants suggest that the terrorists used chemical weapons against Kurds in Syria's Kobani. The pictures show burns and white spots on victims' bodies, while there are no visible injuries or external bleeding. Kurdish activists earlier said that ISIL militants attacked them with chemicals in a village near Kobani. The pictures also suggest that ISIL could possess a huge stockpile of chemical arms. Meanwhile, the Syrian ambassador to the UN has accused Turkey and Saudi Arabia of providing weapons of mass destruction to the terrorists in his country. Bashar al-Jaffrey told the UN committee that Ankara and Riyadh were involved in giving chemical weapons to the insurgents. He said that Turkey supports over 100 terrorist groups in Syria. Webster Griffin Tarpley is the author and historian joining us from Washington to tell us more about this. Webster Griffin Tarpley, this is uh, quite a development uh, coming. I, I'm wondering if, uh, if the U.S., if Turkey, if Saudi Arabia, and of course we could put uh, other countries involved in this, are going to wake up and understand the threat that these uh, terrorists pose, unless somehow they're all involved, uh, based on this report that we have, in providing some chemical weapons to these ISIL terrorists. Well, why don't we start first with the with the report, which I think is an extraordinary development, especially given the source. Right, this is not um, a, a partisan source in a certain sense. It is the Israelis. It is the uh, the Gloria, the um, global research in uh, international affairs institute of Herzliya, and the document that they put out, the the Meria, the uh, the Middle East. Uh, quarterly, uh, which now has authoritative evidence, it's confirmed also by Israeli experts, and by officials of the Kurdish the government in the uh, Kobane area, that ISIS, the, uh, the people that are now besieging and attacking the city, are, uh, they are now strongly suspected, I think it's virtually an open and shut case, of having used poison gas, that is chemical weapons, i.e. weapons of mass destruction, against the Kurdish civilian population sometime in July. And the uh, finding is, and it's backed up by plenty of evidence, as you say, photographs as well as testimony, that this was mustard gas. This was a blistering agent which killed a significant number of people. And it looks like, according to the report, that these poison gas um, shells or other vectors were uh, found in old uh, depots of the Saddam Hussein era. In other words, they go back to pre-1991, pre-Desert Storm. So this is an absolutely shocking development coming again from that authoritative Israeli think tank in Herzliya. And it seems to me this will now have to uh, impress itself on uh, people around the world. I would uh, point with absolute condemnation to the statement made by Secretary of State Kerry yesterday. He's essentially saying that he has written off Kobane. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Secretary, uh, that is a tantamount to condoning genocide, because what ISIS is planning in Kobane is known to all authorities, any reasonable observer. There can be no doubt that will be a colossal bloodbath, and that might make Secretary Kerry uh, vulnerable to charges on uh, human rights violations or somehow being an accessory in genocide. Um, and that's, I think, the, uh, the situation. The other thing I would report here from Washington is we're seeing the, uh, the emergence of what I can only call an axis of evil, the real axis of evil, which is Qatar, Turkey, and ISIS. Uh, Qatar, in the press in the last couple of days, we've seen these reports that uh, nobody wants to, to be in the same room with Qatar because they're notorious for backing all of the most extreme terrorists in the, in the Middle East, including the Nusra and other components of the uh, Syrian rebels, but also Turkey. Uh, the Turkish foreign minister, Kabul Soliu, is here today, and he's trying to get the United States into another war in the sense of seizing territory that belongs to Syria. Uh, so as far as we can see, there has been no agreement on the use of uh, Interlake Air Force Base. It's a NATO base, and this would be a perfect place from which to launch uh, attacks against these ISIS people around 
around Kobane, but uh, the Turks are, are saying no. At this point, I wonder what is the, the meaning of NATO. Uh, if there's any NATO left, Tur Turkey should certainly be kicked out of it. Um, another point I would just point to is if we go back to Operation Desert Storm, we mentioned it just now, in Operation Desert Storm, the U.S. was launching in the coalition 3,300 sorties per day against Iraq. Uh, today, it's about 30 against the ISIS forces, so uh, one one-hundredth of the effort made then, and uh, certainly they'd be able to, uh, to get that up and prevent a genocide in Kobane. Indeed. Thank you very much for that. I wish we had more time, but uh, we have to leave it there. Webster Griffin Tarpley, their author and historian, talking to us from Washington.